Hey fourth grade, welcome back to another exciting week of learning online. Um, I miss you guys so, so much. Um, just a quick reminder before we start our videos, I do wanna let you know, and I apologize if this wasn't clear earlier, but please, please, please feel free to Zoom me um, if you guys ever have any questions about the math. Um, I am open during any math and science blocks. So please feel free to Zoom, um, to talk to me on Zoom and I can walk you through all of the problems that we're going over. Anything from your student books or your home connections books. Last week, it was really great to see some kids show up during those math blocks. I talked to Sophia, I talked to Cece and Jack, um, and I talked to a couple others. And so I'd love to see your faces. Please make sure that you guys come and ask me questions uh, on Zoom. I'm available during all of the math blocks and the science blocks. And if those times don't work out, parents, if you're watching, or even if the kids, if you guys wanna take the initiative and just email me and say, hey, Jose, I'd really love to talk to you, but I can only talk to you about uh, math at this time or this time, feel free, shoot me an email. I'd love to come and chit chat with you guys about math, okay? Um, so I will leave my Zoom information in the, in the details or the description below. Um, please make sure that you connect with me on Zoom. I'd love to see your faces and talk math. You know how much I'm such a nerd about math. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Fred is also available during math and we he would love to talk to you during math as well. Um, and as well as Pippa. And then Pippa, if you need help with Pippa, just send her an email and saying, hey, is it okay if I come in? She works with both fourth and fifth grade students, so you might wanna check in with her first. Um, but Pip, uh, we love Pippa and she's a great help. Um, and she is also available. So I uh, just wanted to start off the le this lesson by telling you that you guys are watching this before or after and you guys are available during math and science times. I'm here too and I'd love to answer any questions. So please, please, please come and talk to me during those times. My Zoom is down below. Okay, let's get started with math. We're going to start with mental math. A couple of reminders about mental math. There is no writing any of this down. You want to make sure everything is done in your head. This is really good exercise and warm up to really get those skills of doing math in your head a little bit sharper. Okay. Um, and as a reminder, a cool thing about doing this on YouTube is that you guys can pause the video. If you need a little bit more time to think and do the math in your head, that's totally okay. You guys know that I'm fine with that. You taking a little bit of time. Okay, so this is really, really cool because you really get to do this at your own pace. So if you're feeling like you need to slow down, go and click that pause button and then take some time with it. Okay, really do that math in your head. Move on until you're ready. All right, cool. All right, we're going to start this week's mental math problem already. Here we go. Clear those minds. It's like magic. All right, here we go. I want you to start with the number of sides on a pentagon. That pause button is right there if you need it. Oh, over here, I don't know where it is. Okay, hit that pause button if you need it. So we're starting with the number of sides on a pentagon. Ready? Now I want you to add the number of days in a week. Let's keep moving. Now I want you to double that number. You're going to double that number. Cool. Let's move on. Now you're going to divide that number by eight. You're going to divide that number by eight. All right. Are we ready? All right. If you're not, hit pause button. Because if you are ready, I'm going to say the answer. The answer to today's daily math is... Drum roll, please. Three. Nice job, everybody. All right, let's get ready for our lesson Four. math today. Very short list of suppliers. We're gonna need a pencil. You're gonna need your notebook. And you're only going to be working out of your student book today. Exciting, woo! All right, so let's go ahead and get that ready. While you guys are getting ready, I'm going to stop and smell the flower. All right, let's get to it. All right, so today's lesson is called Think Before You Subtract. 
So in today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is now I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios and um, some subtraction problems to do. But before you solve them, I want you to think about a couple of different ways you could solve this problem. So to start off, let's go ahead and open up our notebooks, not the handbooks, okay, not the back, all right? Just the notebook, the front part with the color on it, okay? At the top, I want you to write, think, before you subtract, okay? And when you're ready to move on, I want you to uh, unpause the video so we can move on. Ready? Go. And if we are ready to move on and you have written, um, think before you subtract on your paper, I want you to copy down the following question. The question says, if Nariko was born in 1919, how old is she in 1991? Okay, so make sure that we're copying down this problem. I'll read it out loud again. If Nariko was born in 1919, how old is she in 1991? Okay, I want you to copy down this problem. And I want you to pause the video in just a little bit. I'll tell you when to pause it. When you pause the video, what I want you to do is create an equation, okay, for this problem. And I want you to use two, one, two, two different um, strategies to solve the problem. You can use things like find the difference, you can use removal, you can use constant difference, and you can use the algorithm. Yes, that algorithm. You can use that as one of your strategies today, okay? But I really want you to think before you subtract what strategies might be really helpful in solving this problem. All right, let's pause that video now. When pause this video, it means that you're ready to move on. So let's move on. All right, so let's, I'm gonna show you first a couple of strategies that we could have used for this problem. Okay, if we were using two, we knew that we were using the numbers 1919 and 1991, so we could have circled those. Okay, our question was, how old is she in 1991? We could have underlined that. To solve this, we could have used subtraction, but there are different ways or different strategies of subtraction we could have used. Let's talk about some of those. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about real quick is finding the difference. Okay. So in finding the difference, what you would have done is you could have um, did a number line, had 1919 and 1991 as your two years, and we had a count in between how many numbers there were between 1919 and 1991. If we use a number line to make it easier, I would jump one first to 1920. When I work with 10, multiples of 10, it makes it a lot easier for me to count, okay? So then I count, well, from 1920, I can jump 70 to get to 1990, but I need to get to 1991, so I'm gonna add one more to that, okay? So now I have a total of one plus one plus a 70 to give me a total of 72, okay? So that's one of the, one of the strategies that you use. Great job. Let's talk about another strategy. Now, with constant difference, let's talk a little bit about constant difference. It's not something that we've really used as a strategy before. But with constant difference, we know that there are relationships between numbers, right? We talked about how from one equation to the next, if we see a relationship, if we see the same number of movement in numbers, like plus three or minus two, we, if those are consistent and those are constant, the difference will be the same. So we can manipulate or sh change around some of these numbers to make it easier for us to solve. So for example, uh, if the numbers were 1991 and 1919, I could have said, you know what, here in 1919, using a number line or an equation, 1919 is one away from 1920. It's a lot easier to work with multiples of 10, okay? So I'm moving it forward one, and I say, you know what? That's gonna be about 72 years to get to 1992, but because I had a constant difference of one, 
I'm going to shift back a year and go back to 1991. And that matches the numbers that I'm doing. And I know that this is going to be 72. Okay. To look at it with an equation, I can say 1991 and 1919. This 1919 is really close to 1920. And so I can do that by adding one. So what I do here, I have to do here because it has to be constant. Okay. So I'm going to do that, add one to each one. So now I have 1992 minus 1920. Hey, that makes it a lot easier for me to subtract because now I'm just looking at 92 and 20. Subtracting by multiples of 10 makes it a lot easier because that zero is going to be a no-brainer for you. Okay, and that's going to give me 72. Okay, so constant difference is another strategy we could use. Okay. And of course, everyone's favorite strategy is the standard algorithm because it's simple, but is it really? You guys really have to think about when you're subtracting, are we borrowing from any neighbors? Can the number on the top be subtracted? Sorry, can the number on the bottom be subtracted by the number on the top? For example, here, we can't do one minus nine, okay? If we have one, we try to take away nine, we can't do that. So you have to borrow from a neighbor, okay? This is using the standard algorithm, all right? So, just make sure that if you're using a standard algorithm, that we're being careful when we're borrowing and moving numbers, uh, or sorry, groups of one over to our next neighbor. Okay? So, there's one more problem for you guys to do. Problem number two says, if Bai was born in 1927, how old was she in 1982? What I want you to use, what I want you to do is use two different strategies, okay? And I have the examples of three of them up here. We have constant difference. We have find the difference. We have standard algorithm, okay? So, I want you to use two of those strategies to solve for this problem, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video here and let's get to work. Good luck. If Bay was born in 1927, how old was she in 1982? What did you guys come up with? What strategies did you guys use? I want you to leave a comment down below naming the two strategies that you used. No need to show me the answer. I just want you to I just want to know what strategies you guys used. Okay? Now, I want you to pause the video just a little bit one more time. And when you do that, I want you to flip your notebook to uh, your handbook side, okay? Remember the handbook is where we keep all of our notes, really things that we want to remember, things we don't want to forget easily, okay? You can feel free to pause the video, I will move out of the way. And I want you to copy down these three strategies I have behind me. And I want you to draw a little picture or, um, equation or number line to help you remember what the um, what the strategy is, okay? So move out of the way now, copy down, you can pause the video to help you, um, and you guys can copy down all three of these in your handbook. All right, my wonderful, intelligent, courageous fourth graders, before I sign off, on this video, I want to do two things. One is remind you one more time. If you guys have any questions on any of the uh, lessons, on any of the videos, any of the work, um, whether it was last week, this week, or in the future, please feel free to um, click on my Zoom link down below so you guys can come and chat with me. I am going to be available during math and science. Um, and I'd love to see you guys, even if it's just to say hi. Um, or if you have a question about subtraction, or if you have a question about Toby, um, but I'd love to see you guys um, there. So please, please, please make sure that you guys remember that, okay? And the second thing is your assignment for today. So for today, we're gonna work on our student books. We're gonna be working on page 144. That's all I got. That's just one page to do, all right? So again, thank you so much for your hard work. I hope you're doing amazing. Please, please, please come and say hi on Zoom. I'd love to see you, even if it's just for a little bit, even if you have one tiny little question or a big question, it doesn't matter. I still would like for you to pop in. 
Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.